This is the time of year most people love, right? This is the time for thick, itchy sweaters and crunchy leaves that fall to the ground that you can't resist but to step on. I also love watching horror movies around this time of year. Halloween is in a week or so, so I'm deep into the scary movies. The fall season and horror movies are one of the best matches in my opinion. It just feels right. I'm a huge fan of the horror movie genre. I would say it's probably my favorite movie genre. There are different categories to horror movies, but one of my favorite overall feelings is putting on a good classic like The Others to the stop motion films like Coraline or The Corpse Bride and just enjoy a good film. And might I add, any movie night is not perfect without a great smelling candle to really set the mood. In saying all of this, in honor of the fall season, movie nights, and Halloween parties with your closest people, I want to discuss 10 great candles to set in the feeling that will make these times memorable. Hey what's up, I'm Rakima, welcome to Detail Dream, where the primary focus is to expose you to the expansive world of luxury goods for yourself and your home. So while we're on the topic of horror movies and Halloween, one candle instantly comes to mind that fits in perfectly for any scary movie night or Halloween party, and that's of course the Mary scent from Chudon, one of my all-time favorite fall winter scents. Has anyone visited the new Trudon store on Merrill's yet? I am so happy there is a Trudon store in LA now. Every scent is there, including the fragrances. The staff is top tier incredible as well. Shout out to Adam who watches these videos. If you haven't been yet, it's definitely worth paying them a visit. And sniff the Mary scent while you're there. This scent is a warm woody spice. It has a bit of earthy qualities as well with an incredible depth. If you don't know, this scent is based around Mary Shelley, the well-known writer of Frankenstein. Speaking of Frankenstein, I don't know why there hasn't been a new movie on this well-known character, especially with all of these remakes. I would love to see a new rendition of a Frankenstein movie, but with the proper director though because some of these new horror movies are not that good. I would be all for a new Frankenstein movie, I think it would be interesting. Anyways, the Mary scent has top spicy notes of cardamom, juniper, and pepper, going into the dry woody heart notes of guidwood, cedarwood, papyrus, and patchouli with a base of moss and labdanum. From this scent on cold, my nose immediately picks up that this is a very deep spicy scent with those top notes. Very peppery, but with the introduction of the mid and bass notes, it adds depth and character to the overall scent. This is such a prominent spicy, woody, dry earthy scent. I love to burn this scent around this time of year. And as with most Trudon scents, the Mary scent has a prominent cold throw with a strong hot throw. If you need an extreme performer to scent an entire house, the great size is offered as well. And this amazing matte black Trudon vessel. It's a nice change from their normal green glass vessels and further narrates the story of Mary Shelley. Matte at land. I haven't talked about this house in a while. Nice Sook is the scent I want to discuss. I wasn't able to add this scent to last year's fall recommendation, so I had to make sure to mention it this year. This scent falls in line with Mary from Chudon. The scents aren't similar, but the quality of the scent and the feeling they give me are similar. Matted Land candles are worth every penny in my opinion. Incredible. The strength they're able to pull from a soy and beeswax blend. I'll say it again, it's noteworthy. I'm a huge fan of beeswax. It makes the candle more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Night Sook is one of my favorite fall scents from this house, comprised of instant patchouli and vanilla. It's deep, it's dark, and I would go as far as saying it's a bit sweet and creamy as well, thanks to the vanilla. That sweet creaminess I get from this is mainly in the background, but I can definitely pick up on the nuance of the vanilla. The incense isn't a smoky incense. I would say it has a more resinous feel to it that gives the scent a darker edge. And most of the depth I'm getting from this scent is definitely coming from that patchouli, which can take on so many different forms. It can be earthy, it can be sweet, it can be woody, it can be dry. It works really well with the incense of vanilla. The iron vessel and lid has such an eye-catching aesthetic look to it. One of the main things I love about the Madelan brand. I love to have this just sitting out in my space. It provides a different look other than the popular glass and porcelain vessels. Madeline has very good brand identity. The performance from the cold throw is a strong moderate with a strong hot throw. Amazing performance from a vegetable based wax. 
If you want to know more about this house, I will have that conversation linked in the description where I also talked about graphite robes as well. The Grace Jones candle from Boy Smells is a candle I did not like at first, I'm going to be honest. I think I mentioned that before, but after burning through the first one last fall, it grew on me so now I have to mention it for this fall's lineup. Okay, it's a lot going on with this scent. It's complex in my opinion. It's full of personality, as you would assume with this being a Grace Jones scent. Just expect the scent profile to be full of life. It's classified as an earthy, spicy scent, but I will tell you now, I'm not getting that scent profile in person. On cold, my nose mainly picks up a warm floral with watery accords, almost tropical in a way. I was expecting this very strong, earthy, spicy scent before getting this in hand, which is probably why I didn't take to it at first. In the top notes, there is black pepper, bergamot, and ambergris, going into the mid of freezer, water lily, Turkish rose, absolute, and cedarwood, with the base of salted musk and waterstone accord. On cold, I'm mainly picking up the strength of the mid notes, especially the freezer and water lily. I'm mentioning this scent as something I'm burning for the fall because, when burning, this actually transforms into a warm, woody floral that has a different feel other than the usual fall focus scents. And the little bit of earthiness I do pick up from the hot throw, I'm sure it's coming from the ambergris. A very unique scent for sure that I would recommend sniffing before blind buying. I do want to mention the vessel. This deep, dark, purplish color fading into black is on par with the persona of Grace Jones. I really enjoy the look of it. This is a special, unique candle. Just don't expect a strong, earthy, spicy scent from it. The cold throw is subtle with a strong hot throw. This scent definitely wakes up when burning. If you haven't already, get your nose on this scent to find out if it's something that you're into. Teakwood and Tobacco from PF Canico is a scent I'm constantly talking about on the channel, so I will mention it. But there is a new scent they just released called Enoki Cedar that I will be testing for this fall season to see how it compares to Teakwood and Tobacco. Enoki Cedar is one of four new scents from their new Alchemy collection. When I went to the launch event for this new collection and put my nose to Enoki Cedar for the first time, I knew it was going to be something I'd be utilizing heavy for the fall season. This is honestly good any time of year, but it just makes a lot of sense for the fall winter season. As more of a daily burn, this is one of the best options that won't hit the pockets as hard, like some of the other candles I mentioned. This scent is very grounding with rich, earthy qualities and vibrant, relaxing notes. Vibrant lemon leaf, lavender, and petit gran are in the top notes, rounded out with a beautiful base of rich earth, sandalwood, woody violet, and amber. The idea and focus around this new collection is well-being by providing good quality mood-lifting properties. Ultimately, these were made for relaxation, you know, rest and reset. Perfect for my friends who are more interested in the aromatherapy type of candles as well. I find Enoki Cedar to be a bit addicting. It's warm, woody, grounding, earthy. The earthiness is more like damp earth in all the best ways possible. Imagine the stimulating sensation of sinking your feet into damp soil, disconnecting from all the outside noise for a brief second. That's Enoki Cedar. Overall, this is a deep, earthy, masculine scent. Great for relaxing on these cool fall days. The cold throw is subtle with a moderately strong hot throw. This is a scent I actually wouldn't mind being overpowering since it's more of an aromatherapy focused scent. Would love, love, love for the scent to light up my entire space, but it's still a scent that I will be reaching for daily. I just had a thought. I may actually layer this with the teakwood and tobacco scent to see how they play off each other. I think it'll be a good match. I haven't talked about Evermore London on the channel in such a long time. The Moon scent is just an incredible, dark, sensual scent with depth. So good. I have an infatuation with this scent. If you ever wanted to get your nose on the scents from Evermore London, I recently found out that the scent room on Larchmont here in LA has all the scents on display. Get your nose on the Moon scent to see just how good it is. 
I was going to mention the smoke scent from this house as well, which is also good. But for me, it's, it's the scent that I would burn in the heart of the winter season, so more towards the end of the year. I've been burning the moon scent for the past couple years during cool evening hours of the fall season, so I find it appropriate to add it to this lineup. This is strictly an evening time scent for me. It's dark, it's deep, it's sensual, it's a sophisticated mature scent. I can't forget to mention the rapeseed wax for an excellent clean burn and with a good amount of strength makes this candle even better. Up top there's the introduction of rose petals going into the mid of saffron and violet leaf with a strong rich base of sage, patchouli, cedarwood, and cade. The rose petals are very prominent when smelling this scent on cold. But it develops with a deep warm complexity that makes this scent more in inviting. Evermore London candles are on the stronger side, but they're very enjoyable in a space that allows them to breathe. The cold throw is moderate with a strong hot throw. Emphasis on the strong. Expect to see more from the house of Evermore London as we get deeper into the holiday season. Fuda Bois from Lafco is loved by so many for good reason. This is a staple warm smoky scent in the collection with an essence of pure luxury. This is one candle to add to a collection. It's a must have. If you're having friends over for a movie night or a small gathering and you want that luxury warm ambiance, this is a great option. I would even say this is a safe blind buy. This isn't an overpowering smoky scent. Like I said, it's a luxury take on a smoky scent. This is a vacation home in Aspen inside of a candle. With cedar leaf, mountain spruce, and pine, you smell from the surrounding forest. Mixing with patchouli, sandalwood, and Virginia cedarwood. Rounded out with the warm, resinous, frankincense, amber, and myrrh. This is a scent that will be burned for a very long time going into the winter season. And it looks like I'm almost out of this one, which means I get to pick up another. I'm thinking about that 30 ounce with two wicks for even better performance. The 15 ounce is fine, don't get me wrong, but the 30 ounce will last me a bit longer. The cold throw is moderate, average for a candle this size, and the hot throw is strong, of course. I see I bought off the best of the best this season. I love a good performing candle. Lavco is one of those houses where you know exactly what to expect with their candles. You know you're getting great quality with the performance to match. Feudal Bois will always be a staple scent for me, and there isn't a set time where I like to burn this scent. I just go by feeling. Whenever I'm in the mood for it, I'll burn it, whether that be the morning hours or the evening hours. It really doesn't matter with this scent. When I first smelled the CC scent from Home Court, it quickly became a favorite overall home fragrance scent for me. I first talked about this scent in the video where I discussed different celebrity brand candles, and I expressed how much I loved Courtney Cox brand Home Court for these amazing creations of scent. Even if this wasn't a celebrity brand, it will still stand as one of the top candle houses for me personally. To tell you the truth, I honestly was not expecting to like this brand as much as I do, but this scent changed things for me. The CC scent, it's warm, it's smoky, it's dry, with just the slightest hint of spice. Smelling this makes me think of driving down a tree-lined street on a cool fall day as colorful leaves fall from the trees. You get a mix of warmth with that earthy dryness. So good. Inside of this natural clay vessel, you'll find prominent linear notes of Guatemalan cardamom, dried made absolute leaves, Sri Lankan cinnamon, carrot seeds and leaves, Indonesian patchouli oil and vetiver oil. That patchouli oil and vetiver oil are incredible in this and mixing with the subtle spice of cardamom and cinnamon makes this an overall deep grounding scent. This is the definition of a great fall scent. I would say it's a good safe blind buy as well. It gives me a sense of familiarity. It puts me in a state of nostalgia with good feelings. I don't believe Home Court has candles in physical stores, at least to my knowledge, so this was taking a chance as a blind buy, and I will say, this blind buy was 100% worth it. The only thing is, it doesn't come with a lid or a box to keep the candle away from outside elements such as dust, but I burned it enough so I don't have to worry about dust or anything else. Other than that, this is a 10 out of 10 candle and 10 out of 10 brand. The upstate scent from the house of Preston Conrad is one of those timeless everyday fall scents, much like Lafco's Fruit de Bois. It has that same smoky essence, but with an underlying luxury to it in that sub $50 range. 
This one is a bit more on the smoky side though. It's warm and cozy, like wearing a fine knit sweater sitting next to the fireplace. You know, memorable moments. This is another scent with a linear profile with notes of fireside smoke, black pepper, roasting wood, white ember, smoldering cedar, amber, and musk. This is something I reach for when I want a more woodsy, smoky scent, and at the same time, doesn't fill my space with this extreme smoldering wood scent. I don't usually burn anything that strong until the heart of the winter season. This is a smooth, smoky scent that I appreciate a lot. I believe Preston Conrad uses a coconut rapeseed blend, so expect a very clean burn with good performance. The cold throw is on the moderate side with a strong, smooth hot throw. Smoky candles tend to have good performance anyways because of their strong essence, and I'm glad the upstate scent provides my space with a nice, warm ambiance. I recently burned this one night when I was working late, and I loved how it made me feel, so I think I'll continue to burn this when I'm burning the midnight oil. There is another Preston Conrad candle that will be making an appearance for this winter's holiday season, so expect to see more from this house. 228 Grant Street with a sweet orange and Moroccan spice scent is a strong head turner, nostril flaring scent. For the fall season, I am for sure utilizing the polarizing scent of sweet orange and Moroccan spice. To tell you the truth, I never stopped burning this scent since the review conversation on 228 a couple months back. A sweet orange and Moroccan spice was made for the fall season, made for the holiday season. This oozes Thanksgiving. Perfect addition to the lineup of heavy hitters. I love burning this any time of day. It's one of the only candles that can keep its full strength with open windows. I guess that's thanks to the shape of the vessel. It's like a built-in hurricane. The performance is amazing. But the scent of sweet orange and Moroccan spice itself. It's warm with spice and vibrant with sweet orange. It gives my space a surreal home feeling, if that makes any sense. It's like the strong citrus cinnamon potpourri my mom used to get from the grocery store during the holiday season. This reminds me of that warm family feeling with prominent notes of sweet orange, clove, coriander, nutmeg, and allspice. Confession time. Sometimes when I go to my candle cabinet, I sometimes pick, pick this up just to smell it. I'm not joking. It instantly gives me clarity because of the pronounced citrus spice. 228 Grand Street uses domestic soy for their wax, so they burn very clean, and the strength of their candles are on par with other candles double the price. And thanks to the shape of the vessel, I get a full melt every single time without fail. I never have to micromanage this candle to make sure the wax is melting properly. Only if all candles can be this way. The cold throw is strong, at least for the sweet orange Moroccan spice scent. And the hot throw is strong. It will fill the space with no effort. I pick up the scent from across the room within five minutes of burning. If you have any scents from 228 Grand Street, let me know your experience. And if you want to see the full detailed review on this house, I will have it linked in the description. The last candle I want to discuss is the robust scent of Whiskey Nights from Wickers Creek. To this day, I have not found a scent quite like this one. This is an intoxicating, unique, complex scent that's full of character. It has the warm sensation of a fine whiskey, so it has that boozy scent profile. It's comprised of Devana oil, patchouli, and white oak from aged whiskey barrels that provides a dry woodiness to it that you tend to find with whiskey. Boozy, warm, and woody is what I mostly get with this scent. It's polarizing in a unique way. Whiskey Nights has a masculine maturity that I'm drawn to. It's smooth and sophisticated like aged whiskey. You know the whiskey that you only open on special occasions? This provides that exact feeling. A smooth whiskey essence I enjoy burning during a cold day outside when it's nice and warm on the inside watching movies. Doesn't get any better than that. I'm not a big drinker, but I do have my choices. So if I could give a suggestion, Don Papa Rum mixed with Coke is quite extraordinary to me. Take that and add it into a movie night with friends or, or solo and have whiskey nights burning in, burning in the background. It sounds like a good time to me. And the well-made vessels from Wickers Creek will be a nice touch to a masculine space. I'm thinking a rustic or industrial style space. The unique shape of the vessel will definitely stand out along with the scent of course. The cold throw is moderate with a strong hot throw. The two wicks this has really does help throw the scent further. I have run into the inevitable tunneling of the far corners of the vessel though. I'm guessing the metal corners of the vessel isn't getting hot enough for the wax to melt properly and it doesn't matter how long I burn the candle for, even aluminum foil doesn't help, so 
I'm guessing it's just the shape of the vessel. I will keep trying to correct it and let y'all know if anything works out or if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments. Other than that, the scent is incredible and I will continue to burn it for the fall season. Let me know what candles you're burning this fall or if you have any other candles I talked about today. Let's also talk horror movies. How many of you are also fans of horror movies? What are some of your go-tos, no matter how bad it is? Maybe I haven't seen it and I'll have something new to watch. Let's have an amazing fall season.